Let's go ahead and get started. Continue. The Adventure of the Unbreakable Speckled Band. I wonder who the silhouette could be there. I have I have no idea who would wear a hat like that or have a corncob pipe or wear that weird thing. That's what I mean. I'm supposed to have a lot of chocolates up, but you don't have... Oh, no! Okay, well, I guess I'll have to fix that. Uh, the Adventure of the Unbreakable... The corner of that small, dark room, Sholmes and I waited with bated Oh, yeah! Sholmes! In time, there came from the ventilator a hiss and a soft, almost growl-like sound. Suddenly, Sholmes sprang into action, lashing furiously with his cane at a point in the darkness. You see it, Wilson? He yelled, his tense voice reverberating through the air. I raised my dark lantern shutter, and the room slowly came into view. Sholmes was staring intently at one particular corner, when he started whispering to me. The victim's most perplexing final words. The speckled band. I believe this is the terrible coil to which she referred, Wilson. In front of us was an enormous adder, its fangs bared as it threatened to strike. It truly was the most terrible speckled band I had ever seen. I was thinking like a, like a bracelet? I... I was thinking it was a bracelet. Okay, now the January 6, 37 a.m. onboard steamship. Crap, I didn't read the name fast. Oh, it's another cutscene. Oh. So then, let us unravel this mystery and discover what events led to this curious murder. Pray, do excuse me. The cabin door was bolted from the inside when the man was killed. No marks to suggest the bolt was tampered with in any way. So... This would appear to be a locked room mystery. But isn't that, isn't it broken? In his final moments, the victim scrawled a message on the floor. In blood? Is that blood? Why is it purple? Oh, certainly oh it's ink. Okay. Upset bottle. A Russian word. <gasps> so the victim was a Russian man then. And the letters are well formed, suggesting he was compass mentis at the time. Hmm, yeah, I think they broke it to get in, yeah. Script. But... And evidently, not penned by the same hand as this message. In fact, I deduce it was written by someone of a different nationality. This paper seal was placed just prior to the incident by the victim himself, I would venture. Well, what have we here? you and what do you think you're doing here what's wrong with your face no, no, sir no one must touch before maritime police come we must wait Shh. that won't be necessary that's you suspicious see, in less than five seconds from now i will reveal the killer to you what? <gasps> don't be absurd this is murder and it can be locked from inside ah yes the locked room but that mystery is paper thin you, you don't mean the culprit is in there? <laughs> who, who are you and where have you come from? I'm a great British consultant detective, the only one in the world. Herlock Sholmes. I presume you must have heard of him. No, I have it. All right. Uh, my head is throb. Excuse me, whose head is throbbing? Is it me? What's going on? Something's not right here. There's trouble in the air. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Oh. Man, am I gonna be? Wait. I I can't move. Your favorite character. Ah. Oh. I'm shackled. What? <laughs> Why am I in handcuffs? Hmm, so you wake up now, hmm? What? Who are you? 
Well, okay, I, know, I mean, I know who you are, but, like, who are you? I just know that you're a sailor and things are happening. We had to drag you out of the wardrobe. I do not believe how you could not wake up. You are a true cold-blooded man. How many times? Am I? Is this the second time in a row that I'm accused of murder? Am I the Maya of this game? No favorite character who's not Blackwell. I mean, Blackwell is great, but unfortunately, Blackwell will not be in this game because it's many years before he existed. You, uh, you found me then. Are you a, were you a stowaway, Rinosuke? Ah, we found you and now you pay, criminal. How long are you hiding in that tiny wardrobe, hmm? Ugh, sorry. Now you have been found, it is time to admit your crimes. Unless you want to find out how cold the ocean is, hmm? No, 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 I'll, I'll tell you everything. There's only one thing I'd like to know from you. Isn't that... Oh, it's, yeah, it's her. Why did you do it? Why did you take his life? Why, why is everybody blaming me? M -m Miss Suzato. Wait, what did you just say? Disappears from existence. No, cat, please don't. I like your existence. I wish it was a lot closer than to mine, but unfortunately there's only so much we can do about it. The fact that the world is large. Take his life? Um, where, where is he? Where's Kazuma? Are, are you, what is this? Is this another goddamn Mia Fey where we're like, ah, oh, yeah, cool person who knows a lot. And then they just immediately get fucking murdered. You pretend you do not know? You are a wolf in sheep's pelt. You are the killer. Do not try to make excuses. Uh, no, what? What? No, seriously, what? Kazuma-san was... Kazuma-sama's body was discovered not long ago. Here, in this very cabin that was bolted shut from the inside. It, his body? Please, do not try to tell us you were doing this terrible thing in your sleep. Kazuma's dead? But can't be. And these handcuffs, surely you don't think I... I have to know, why did you take Kazuma-sama's life? Answer me, please. No. No! God! Man. Is this whole game just me being in incriminated? Because I feel like this is going to be a trend. <laughs> Kazuma. It was just two short weeks ago. Yeah, that's when we... Okay. It is better than the Spirit of Justice, though. You're gonna get more street cred? Probably, I mean, it, it, well, I hope so. I don't know what my street cred is at. I feel like it's not too high. Sure about this, won't we get in trouble? <laughs> don't you find it fun being a stowaway? Besides, how else could you come to England with me to study? I knew I was stowing away, but... At least something else when they brought your luggage in here earlier, though. The way that Russian crewman just tossed your traveling case onto the floor. I thought I was gonna die. Yes, I still can't quite believe that. Maya sneezes. She got exactly. She just. She, she, she like. You're like you toppled a small country. She's like I, I don't know. I just want a burger. Really didn't think you'd be able to fit inside my trunk. You must be even less of a man than you look. Wow, Cosma! Hey, honestly, I thought I'd broken every bone in my body. Well, it's about 50 days until we dock in Great Britain. But if you confine yourself to my cabin here, I don't expect anyone will discover you. Man, I forgot ship travel took months. Dang. Ugh, I hope not. They're a sturdy bunch, that's for sure. Yeah. 
What I want to know is why do we keep need to keep it a secret from the young lady? From our faithful judicial assistant Mikotoba, you mean? From your close friend, more to the point. Surely we could confide in her, couldn't we? I don't believe she'd give me away. No, but if she knew what we'd done, that would make her guilty by association. It's best that only you and I know about this. Hmm, I suppose so. Wow, well that makes things a lot harder now. Anyway, it's about the time that the steward is supposed to come and clean the cabin. I know it's cramped, but you better get in there, I think. It won't be for long. Anyway, compared to hiding inside my traveling case, it'll be a breeze. Yes, but what if the steward decides to open the wardrobe for some reason? Then I'll be in for it. Stop worrying, I tell you what. Why don't we write, why don't you write keep out or something on this piece of paper? What? Then I can stick it over the wardrobe doors once you're inside. I don't know. Well, boy. I've only been at sea for about 15 days. How can this have happened? We were supposed to be going on this adventure to England together. Are we gonna have a boat trial? Do we have a boat judge? A boat court? Oh, next port. Okay, never mind. We leave you at next port. Stay quiet until then. Don't make more trouble for yourself. Murderer! I feel like the murderer's giant snake, bro. No, I'm not a murderer! Ah, you said before. You said you admit everything about your crimes. No, that's not right. I mean, yes, I did stow away on the ship, but murdering my best friend? No one else could have done it. Admit the truth. The lock is broken, guys. Come on. Um, Suzaro-san? Please, tell me what happened. I need to know. Very well. But there's something I would like to ask of you, too. Ugh, those eyes. She looks, she looks like she's ready to destroy me. This nightmare is getting worse by the minute. So all I can do is try to find out what really happened. He, he really has been killed, hasn't he? This isn't just a bad dream? And these handcuffs, they think I did it. They think I'm Kazuma's killer? When they found him, the cabin was locked from the inside. What do you mean? There's no access to the cabin via a porthole window and the bolt on the door can't be operated from the outside. In other words, after the crime, the culprit couldn't have escaped these four walls. What? Or to put it another way, the culprit could only have been somebody inside this cabin. Or do you have some other explanation? This is impossible. How did he die then? What happened exactly? Are you still going to deny the charge, even despite the circumstances? Please, Suzaro-san, you have to tell me. The cause of death is still undetermined. I don't know how he died. The ship's doctor is examining the body, but of course he has no post-mortem analysis experience. I don't suppose we shall learn more until an expert has been consulted at our next port of call. So presumably that means there were no obvious external signs of injury then. That's true, yes. Okay, about the incident. Can't anyone tell me what actually happened here in this cabin? I don't understand it! Why would anyone want to kill Kazuma? Presumably, that's something you know the answer to better than anyone. Please. Whatever you say, you were here in the cabin after all. Well, yes, I was, but... He would always wake up before dawn and do his training first thing in the morning. I was waiting outside his cabin, as I have every day so far on this voyage. But this morning, he did not come. I could sense that he wouldn't. Does that mean he was already dead when Suzaro-san arrived at his cabin door, I wonder? I knocked, but there was no reply. Then I started to become worried, so I went to find a member of the crew. Oh, unless they're the ones that ca Okay, they're the ones that forced the door open. And when we managed to get inside... 
There was Kazuma-sama collapsed on the floor. Looks like he wrote something in Russian. I don't know if he knows Russian. And the white tape there now shows exactly where he was found, I suppose. I had no idea anything had happened. I must have been asleep in the wardrobe somehow. I wish it wasn't the case, but that's just very hard to believe. It's all very hard to believe for me too, trust me. Now I've told you everything that I know, so it's my turn to ask you a question. Yes, all right. Oh, my head feels so heavy, it's still throbbing like anything. Why are you even on board the ship, Naruhodo-san? You said something before about being a stowaway, didn't you? Oh, yes, I'm afraid that's true. It's two weeks since we left Japan now, and I've been shut up in this cabin the entire time. I had no idea. But how could you have occupied Kazuma-sama's cabin for so long without him noticing? Ah, no, no, no! That would have been impossible, obviously! Yes, of course. Kazuma invited me. He wanted us to go to England together. He actually asked you? But why? I'm afraid I don't really know the reason myself. I don't understand. Kazuma, why do you want this? What's the real reason? Why go to, go to such extreme lengths to smuggle me to England with you? An idea that's been on my mind ever since the end of that incredible trial. I think I told you then, didn't I? That you ought to become a lawyer yourself. Well, yes, you did say that, but I didn't think you were serious. You have a talent for it. I can assure you of that. But I've never really thought about becoming a lawyer. Well, that's something you can decide for yourself. London is at the spearhead of cultural development, the center of the world in many ways. There can't be any harm in seeing such an important place with your own eyes, can there? Well, no, definitely not. But on a personal level, and if you were to become a lawyer, then, uh... Then what? Nothing. Forget it. Okay! Azuma-sama is... He's always saying the same thing. But he wanted to change the Japanese legal system. Perhaps he thought that he could do that with you. Yes, maybe. But something's still bothering me a little. The look in his eyes, then. It was darker than I'd ever seen it before. Um, Suzara-san, I'm sorry that we kept it a secret from you. My stowing away on the ship, I mean. If I know Kazuma-sama, I expect he was trying to protect me, to avoid me becoming guilty by association. That's, uh, uh that's exactly right, yes. Well, uh, word perfect, in fact. Dang. If you're not the culprit, then tell me. What happened last night here in this cabin? Well, the thing is, I don't really remember. Kazuma brought me something to eat, just like he always did. And then I got myself into the wardrobe over there, just like I always did. After that, I... fell asleep? Um, well, yes. So deeply that you didn't even stir when Kazuma-sama was killed, I bet I was given sleeping drugs. Um, well, yes. I know it sounds unbelievable. Really, I do, but it's the truth. If only I'd woken up, then perhaps I wouldn't be in this predicament. For some reason, my head's still throbbing like anything. Really? Um, is something wrong? Oh, um, no, it's... Please, forget it. Suzana-san, you have to believe me. I didn't do it. I... I really don't want to doubt you, but the trouble is, there's no one else who could possibly have done this. Ugh. I don't know, I, I, I think somebody else could have done that. Kazuma, I don't understand, why? Why did this have to happen? Ugh, can't take this! Don't try to go anywhere. You're the perpetrator of this crime, you can't leave. I can't allow that to happen. I'm sorry, but Kazuma was killed right under my nose here, and I didn't do anything to stop it. And now I'm supposed to just sit around with my hands tied while whomever did it walks free? Whoops. No, I can't allow that to happen. 
Well, what do you propose to do then? I'm going to investigate. I'm going to find out exactly what happened here. I'm going to work out who took Kazuma's life and how and why they did it. So I'm sorry, but you're going to have to excuse me. Aya! Wow! I got fucking bodied! Well, what the. Wow. That was a. Suzato takedown. Thanks. A Suzato what? What martial art form is that? I'm going to need you to prove it. Sorry, prove it? Yes, your innocence. I need evidence. But how am I supposed to? Have you forgotten already? What you achieved just a few weeks ago. You successfully defended yourself in a court of law. Ah, I see. He's expecting me to present some conclusive evidence. I need to find it first, though. I have to get Suzato-san to believe me. I'll show her some evidence right now that proves I'm not guilty of this crime. Uh... Yes. Tell me, when I was discovered in the wardrobe before, was this piece of paper stuck over the doors? Oh, yes, it was. I remember it clearly. I thought so. Kazuma always put it in place whenever I went to sleep in there, just in case the cabin steward or another crew member decided to look inside. So naturally, he did the same last night as well. Ah! Yes, of course. The gentleman who discovered you peeled that sign from the wardrobe doors before he opened them. But I were truly the culprit, I couldn't have climbed back inside the wardrobe and stuck this on the outside of the doors on my own. Yes, that's quite true. In other words, it's impossible that I killed Kazuma! Well, even if you are sprawled hopelessly on the floor... I can see why Kazuma-sama thought so highly of you. Thank you, Suzaru-san. Now, do you think perhaps you could help me up? Yeah, I'm, my hands are tied. Like, they're literally tied. Well, in light of that evidence, I don't see any reason why I should stop you from investigating here, in here at least. Thank you! So, you finally believe me. I'm sorry. No. What? I'm not sure yet. I can't rule out the possibility that you used some sort of conjuring trick to put the sign back into position. What? What does she think I am? A magician? Hey, Ray Lore. Or yeah, thank you so much for the the host. I hope you've been doing well. For now, I suggest you investigate as thoroughly as possible in here. I'll do the same. All right, let's get to work, Suzaro-san. Please don't misunderstand me. I still have my doubts. It's like we're not friends. Oh. I shall be watching you to make sure you do nothing that might disturb the crime scene. I wouldn't want you using your conjuring tricks to destroy evidence, for example. R right. Seriously, I don't know any magic tricks. Well, anyway, I should make a start on investigating in here. Examine everything I can. Cosmo, I swear, I will avenge your death. Okay. Uh... Yeah, hopefully you're doing all right today. I hope everybody's doing all right today, actually. I just, I know it's Thursday. I usually don't stream till Friday, but I've been, it, it's weird because I've been busy, but I've also been bored. So today I was like, man, I should probably just stream. Also, I didn't stream on Monday because I, I ended up doing other stuff. So it's fine. Mm, Seji, or Segi, I don't actually know how to pronounce that. Japanese word for justice. The brush strokes are straight and true, just like Kazuma. Yes, his calligraphy always was a reflection of his heart. Yet you, can you really look at those characters without feeling shame, knowing who drew them so thoughtfully? Of course I can! I mean, I'm innocent, so why shouldn't I be able to? Yeah, even though you stowed away on the ship, it was his idea! Now you're gonna bring that up, are you? I can't win. Rude. Oh dear, that won't do. Oh, well, what's the matter, Suzaru-san? Whenever I'm examining things, I always find myself so focused, I forget to look around properly. I only looked at one thing! Oh yeah, that's not good. 
Well, no, I'm not as foolish as you in that regard. Touch the sides of the screen if you want to look around more. Okay, yes. Yeah, uh, let's investigate. Thanks. Okay, at least it was a very short tutorial. What is with that leg on the floor? Why is that on the underside of the plate? That's Kazuma Sama's precious sword. He never went anywhere without it. Yes, he was always saying that a Japanese man's katana is his soul. I believe he had to work very hard to convince the government to allow him to bring it on this trip. I suppose that just shows how important it was to him. Now he's gone, and I'm not ready to let his spirit go just yet. Uh, can I, can I take that? I guess I can't take it. What the hell is... Hmm, that's my dinner from last night. A roast chicken. It was really tasty. Yes, it was very delicious, wasn't it? But... Did you eat it on the floor here? I'm not a dog, Suzada san I ate at the table, of course. Which begs the question of when and how the plate ended up on the floor. Yeah, well, I knew about Ice Age, but I didn't know about Rio 3. I I feel like there's only like a certain amount of movies you can make in a franchise before it just becomes so watered down that, like, why even bother? But Kazuma-sama didn't like chicken at all, did he? No, that's right, so he didn't touch it. Which meant all the more for me. Oh no, does, does that mean poor Kazuma-sama spent his last night on this earth with an empty belly? It's just too horrible. Ugh, now I suddenly have a guilty conscience and an achy stomach. I bet that that was probably meant for him for sleepy times nothing on this table at all. The plate and cutlery are all over the floor for some reason. Yes, it's strange. Last night when I went to sleep, I'm sure everything was still. No, wait a minute. What is it? That's funny. I, I can't seem to remember anything about what happened after dinner at all. So then perhaps you are responsible for what happened to Kazuma-sama. No, that's not it. No, 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 no. I probably was like drugged. I What is that? Is that a bell? Oh, what do you think this is? It looks like a broken piece of glassware. Whatever the thing was, it appears to have broken clean in two. The glass is such a beautiful color. It looks like a cute little Netsuke fastener from a kimono outfit. Not sure that sounds like Kazuma. He wouldn't have secretly carried a cute little trinket like this around with him, would he? And the mark beside it, what is it, I wonder? It's sort of brick like you. Yes, you're right. It is the color of brick, isn't it? Even though I don't see anything of the same color anywhere else in the cabin. Oops. No, that's not true. Let's go look at that. When I went for help and the crewman forced the door open, uh, this bolt had been firmly closed. It's quite a small bolt and not particularly sturdy. It just slides across to secure the door shut. But still, with the door bolted, there would be no way to go in or out of the cabin, that's for sure. No wonder everyone suspects me. And the other thing is, Otter, I didn't even know there were seven Ice Ages. I thought there were like three or four. But, well, I didn't know there were already six, I guess turning into the next land before time, which is up to like, I don't know, 40? Maybe not quite that high, but it's ridiculous. It's no wonder why everyone suspects me. When she glares at me like that, I feel tense all up and down my spine. I remember reading once in a detective novel, the culprit used a needle and thread to draw a bolt across from the outside. Uh, the room in a situation like this. Yes, that's a clever trick, isn't it? I'm an avid reader of detective stories myself. But the door of this cabin and its frame are made of metal and they seal together perfectly. There would be no possibility of using that needle and thread trick here, I'm afraid. When she glares at me like that, I feel pins and needles. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Buria. It's essentially a list of requests from all the captain to all the passengers on board. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. 
Pets are also strictly forbidden. All right, have a good one, Otter. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully work goes well for you. What? Why are you staring at me? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking. Are you more of a dangerous object or a pet? I can't decide. Well, one thing's for sure. Either way, I wasn't supposed to be in here. The books have fallen over on the shelf. Look, they're all toppled the same way. And what's this? A statue of some god of the sea? Although he's fallen over as well. Yes, it's almost as if the whole shelf has been ransacked and everything mown down at once. I wonder if perhaps it was Kazuma-sama doing his morning sword training, do you think? I seriously doubt it. Then perhaps... It was you, Naruhodo-san, in a fit of rage. I wouldn't have bothered leaving the wardrobe just to mess up a few books and a statue. The way these things have been thrown about have anything to do with the case, I wonder? Well, I'll just set everything straight again. I don't like to see a mess. You can't do that? It's evidence! Okay. Well, whatever. Is that... St <laughs> okay. Well... Damn. That's a very large traveling case, isn't it? Yes, it carries a lot of memories for me. Memories? What do you mean? Well, that's actually how I stowed away on this vessel. I was brought on board inside that case. Ah, oh, yes, I see it says this way up in Japanese. Which, in hindsight, I should have realized the foreign crewman wouldn't be able to read. I was turned over and over and over, and then I was tossed on the floor here. Oh dear, being a stowaway isn't as romantic as it sounds. Well, it was less painful than a Suzato takedown. Okay. Oops. Oh, uh... Yeah, a lot of memories of... Yeah, I was tossed a lot. Okay, yeah, have have uh... Did... Did Kazuma write that before he died? Looks like it's written in ink. He must have knocked the ink pot from the desk when he collapsed on the floor. Then I suppose he wrote this message by dipping his finger in the spillage. Poor Kazuma-sama, no doubt he was in terrible pain. It's almost unbearable to imagine it. Suppose he was trying to leave some kind of a clue in his final moments, was he? Sorry, partner, but I can't read your writing. Because it's in Russian, it looks like. I don't think that's Japanese, Naruhodo-san. What? Then... Then what language is it? It pains me to admit it, but I don't know. Not a foreign script I'm familiar with. What does it mean, I wonder? Oh, boy. Oops. This is... Yes, it's a bell cord contraption, I think. What do you mean, contraption? I read about it in a book I was studying that talked about life in Great Britain. Large households often have bell cords like this, which you can pull to ring a bell to summon servants. Really? That sounds almost magical. Hmm. Shall we give it a little try? Yes! Uh, in the interests of cultural research, obviously. I suppose nobody comes for a lowly Japanese people. Oh no, Suzano! No, 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 I'm sure it's just that everybody is busy after all. Oh, wow, uh, get, uh, fuck the British. I think that's some kind of opening for a ventilator. A hole through which fresh air can circulate into the cabin. Isn't that a little odd? What do you mean? Well, in this ventilator, if that's what it is, Looks like it must connect to the next door cabin. Yes, it would appear so. Or appear to, you're right. But if its purpose is to allow fresh air into the room, surely it should be connected to the outside. Hmm, that's true. 
Perhaps it's so that rain and spray don't find their way in when the seas are rough, or something like that. I suppose maybe that's it. It's some two weeks since we set sail from Japan. Have you really been living in that wardrobe the entire time, Naruhodo-san? I think living isn't quite the right description. Oh, no, I suppose not. Although it must have been rather exciting making this voyage in your own secret hideout. Uh, the trouble was, I never knew when a member of the crew might come in. So yes, I did basically have to live in the wardrobe. And last night was no exception. But because of that, you had no idea what was happening out here in the cabin. No, sadly not. This is where dear Kazuma-sama would have sat whenever he was writing. London Diary. Poor Kazuma, he didn't even make it to his destination. Looks as though the last entry is incomplete. Which means what? He was in the middle of writing it when the incident happened? Let's see what it says. It could be valuable clue. Hiya! What? No! We, like, we really need to figure this out. That's out of the question. What? Kazuma-sama may have departed this world, but you must not read his private thoughts. But, but what if it's something important? Something relevant to the case? All right, all right, I won't read it. Ugh. Poor Kazuma-sama. I don't like prying into people's personal matters either. But in this case, isn't the need for clues more important? Um... Hello? Where did you come from? Excuse me? Hello? Who's that? He wasn't there a minute ago. As far as I can tell, looks like he might be European. Oh, how did he? Uh, you noticed the man too, have you? I have no idea who he is or how he got in here, but he looks suspicious and tall. Suspiciously tall. Naruhodo-san, don't tell me. Do you really not know who that is? Um, well, no. I don't have any foreign friends or acquaintances at all. He doesn't look like a member of the crew. There's something very unusual about him. And he invest... And is he investigating Kazuma's desk, or is he just playing on it? I can't tell. Well, in that case, we simply must talk with him. Am I just imagining it, or does cesaro san look almost uncontrollably excited? By the way, I expect that you've noticed already, but just in case. If you press A on people when they're in the crosshairs, you can converse with them. Yeah. Okay, let's get him in the crosshairs. Are you okay? Um, excuse me. Excuse me, do you have a moment? Shh. This is a critical point in my investigation. Maybe I should leave him alone. He seems a little uh, unfriendly. Also, hello, Ellie. Welcome. How are you doing today? Yeah, kimono lady. She's competent. Yeah. Yes, perhaps that would be for the best. Oh no, he's here now! Hello! Ah! Ah! Oh, Jesus! Greetings! I hope I haven't kept you long! Why are you saying, oh no? What's... Ah! <laughs> uh. Um, what exactly were you doing on Cosmos' desk just now? Wait! You're on your PC? You're completely logged out? Wait, how are you... Did you not... I thought you used another browser for it. Oh, well... Crap. Yeah, rip. Well, I, at least we got everything else pretty much figured out, right? Yeah. Ah, crap. And you said like the, the oh, I guess, because the two-factor is the big thing. It's not that you don't know the password or anything. It's just two-factor authentication is dumb when you don't have the phone from before. What exactly were you doing at Cosmo's desk just now? Ah, oh, I see. Fascinating. 
Um, sorry? What do you see? Feels like he's looking right through me. Oh, yes, everything is clear now. The train of reasoning has run its course. My deductions have crystallized. Because it sends you a text. Yeah. Uh. You have been in Afghanistan, I perceive. Just recently returned, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, sorry? What? And now, whilst venturing towards foreign climes, you find yourself in a most troubling predicament. Wait, were you using a different browser or something? Okay. Are you good? Are we good? Oh, well, that's true, at least. You're still on your... Okay. Whew. Man, you scared me too, Ellie, because I know that, that we were still trying to get stuff all figured out. But, but how? How the deuce did I know that, perhaps? It was really a most elementary deduction, hardly worth explaining. Have you perhaps managed to deduce uh, anything else? But of course, a great many things. There is no mystery, my dear madame. For example, you have fled your native lands of Russia being as you are a merciless revolutionary. You leave 16 victims of assassination in your wake and now travel to England to blow up the Crystal Tower. And when the ribboned occupant of this very cabin discovered your identity, you ended his life too. <laughs> yes, I believe that summarizes the facts beautifully. No need to hide the truth now. Nothing deceives these eyes. Um, just to be clear, you're talking about me. Are you? Certainly I am. Do you see another in this cabin who fits the bill? A Russian assassin with 16 victims to his name? Uh, he's not in the cabin right now, but I'm pretty sure it's the man with the snaky marks. I don't even see one person who fits the bill. So it's true. It was you who did this to Kazuma-sama. Okay, Dez. Dez, you told me that Suzato was smart. I mean, I guess she still doesn't trust me, but all of that was far too far-fetched for anyone to believe. What? And you're plotting a revolution, too. It's shameful behavior, Naruhodo-san. Absolutely wicked. Uh, you should be able to change it from the chat options down at the bottom. Oh, she, she's flipping me again. Suzato, I had faith. Now explain yourself. Tell me everything. This is ridiculous. Like, seriously. How could you do it? For pity's sake, open your eyes. I'm not a rough Russian revolutionary. Obviously. Oh, forgive me. Okay, yay! Very good. Back to back to the other colors. And as for you, what kind of deduction was that? You were just saying the first thing that came into your head. Ah, but was I not right? Whilst venturing towards foreign climes, you do find yourself in a most troubling predicament. Do you not? Well, yes, maybe. Ha! There you have it, you see. What do you make of that? Hmm? Well, to be honest... This ship is en route to England, and I'm in handcuffs at the scene of a murder. So, I'm not really sure you could call it a deduction. It's more like plain observation. Wait, your phone is dead? Wait, what happened? Like, is it just... It just needs to be charged? Like, it's not like dead dead, right? Cause, Cause you just got that phone recently. I'm going to assume that you were playing games or something on it and... Wait, it's... Oh, that's not good. Did it have any kind of like warranty or anything? You can't do anything on it. Oh boy. Indeed, an observation, my dear boy, is the basis of all deduction. My method is founded upon the observation of trifles, you see. I announce my findings with a brassy certitude, and more often than not, I'm right. Uh, that's not... I don't know how that works. I don't think you introduced yourself. Ah, uh, my apologies. <laughs> 
I am none other than the greatest detective of the century, known to men and women the world over. The inimitable Herlock Sholmes. So, it's really you? The actual Herlock Sholmes? The very same. The inimitable, actual Herlock Sholmes. Yeah, I don't know what's been going on, uh, Ellie, but I feel like everybody's been, that I know has been having some kind of, like, phone issues. My issue was, this is actually a new phone, a, a, well, a, a replacement phone, because my first new phone that I got a few days ago, I was in Aldi at the store getting stuff, and I pulled it out of my pocket, fumbled it, dropped it, and, like, the entire upper half of the screen shattered. And I was just like, man, they just do not build these things the way they used to, because my other phone, I've dropped like dozens of times and it's got not a mark on it. So I'm just like, hmm. But now I was smart and I got a case and it's got like the glass cover on it to keep it from breaking again. Cause I was just like, oh, thankfully I had like a warranty so I could trade it in, but I was just like, man, I really don't want to have to deal with this stuff. I don't know, I hope you can figure something out then. I don't know why it would just be, like, locked up. Unless it, like, an update or something messed with it. The very same! Yeah, okay, I already said that. Do you know this man, Suzato-san? The most famous detective in the world? Not Ruhodo-san, of course I do. There's nobody who hasn't heard of him. Your S7 guys survive any trap. Yeah, exactly. And I found out it's because like, I don't know, I think the glass in this one is like a couple of grades lower, but I'm still like, man, like the fact that it fell once and it just like shattered, like it didn't just like crack, just the screen was like splintering, like, and when I was moving my finger on it, it was catching on the bits of screen and I was like, okay, I gotta replace this. What planet have I been living on then? We must ask him what he's deduced. He deduced a lot of wrong things. At least for my person. He will have worked out the entire case already, I'm sure. Really? Why do I feel uneasy about this? Okay, well I guess I'll talk to... So, you're a great detective, are you? Sorry, what was your name again? Indeed, I am none other than the one and only Herlock Sholmes. Oh, I see. You're German? Herlock, was it? No, no, no. I have no air. I mean, I have hair. Please, call me Sholmes. You can read all about my exploits in this exciting London publication. Oh, yes. Ranst Magazine, full of wonderful short stories and interest articles from Great Britain. I never miss an issue. I have it sent from England especially. So, Herlock Sholmes is to Suzato what the Steel Samurai is to Maya. Got it. Ah yes, here it is, The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. So, you're the protagonist in a series of short stories then. Indeed I am. And you've read so many of your own stories, you've started to think you really are a detective. Make no mistake, I'm not the poor deluded fellow you take me for. Your inference is backward. Ba backward? <clears throat> Excuse me. My trusty biographer records my greatest detecting achievements and chronicles them in the magazine. You have a biographer, do you? Doesn't everyone? Mine goes by the name of Dr. Wilson, present, presently keeping shop in London. Dr. Wilson? I must say, thanks to that publication, I've been fantastically busy of late. Why, this very moment I am returning from Asia, having solved the mystery of a cursed royal crown. Really? Can't work out whether I should take this man seriously or not. Deduction, you see, is to me a science, logical reasoning in its purest form. A science? Really? The astute observer notices even the most subtle of reactions in his subject. 
A furtive glance, a twitch of a muscle, a slight inclination of the posture. Fingernails, arm sleeves, furrows in the skin. All these things are data. Right. And the trained logician makes deductions from this data in the blink of an eye. The ultimate conclusion is, without fail, the truth. As I demonstrated only a few short moments ago. How can he look me in the eye and claim that? So you see, I have a turn both for observation and deduction and fame. That is what makes me the one, the only, eh, uh, uh, <clears throat> no, Herlock Sholmes. Okay, well, that was a lot of uh, self fucking, that was a lot of back padding. Have you managed to deduce anything about this particular case yet? Have I managed to deduce anything? <laughs> My dear fellow, who do you suppose discovered the culprit in his most cunning hiding place? That's right. It was none other than the great detective before you now, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Ah, I see. In other words, I'm in these now because of him. When I became anxious about Kazuma-sama this morning, I summoned all of the crew members to force the cabin door open. And I concealed myself among their number, gaining entry to the scene of the crime. Yes! Luckily for everyone, the great detective Herlock Sholmes was on board. And the handcuffs seemed to be an excellent fit, Mr. Naruhodo. Ah! The very moment I laid eyes on the scene, two facts were immediately apparent to me. Oh, really? Two facts, you say? Okay. Jesus! <laughs> Mr. Shumps, tell us, please, what two facts were apparent to you when you came into the cabin this morning? Ah, yes, but first, let us be precise. No, just be concise, please. The facts in question were immediately apparent to me. Yes, yes, I understand, but what were they? Allow me to elucidate. The two facts that I deduced from a mere momentary glance at the scene of the crime were as follows. Number one. The cabin was locked from within, rendering the escape of the culprit out of the question. Unless, I don't know, they got through that vent up in the corner. Number two, the victim was rushing and killed following a dispute with an acquaintance. Hold on, Mr. Sholmes, what made you think the victim was rushing? Observe the dying message left by the victim on the floor. I, d I don't know how to pronounce that. That is the Russian word for wardrobe. Do, do you really think Kazuma Sama could have left a dying message in Russian? In their final moments, many find their native tongue filling their heads. For this young man, Russian. No, he's not Russian. Obviously somebody else fucking wrote that. Kazuma was Russian, was he? Initially, I considered Gardarob may be the same of the name of the killer, a certain Robert Gard, perhaps. And I have so. But in the interests of thoroughness, I decided it would be wrong not to look inside the wardrobe there, at least, where you found Mr. Naruhodo sleeping soundly. Quite so, I found you, the renowned Russian revolutionary killer. Why is it that I'm Russian too? Oh. Uh, I observed that you were wearing the same attire as the victim. In other words, you were acquainted because we're students in a Japanese school, you dumb piece of shit. And if my memory serves, that outfit is the traditional dress of the Russian people. No, it's not. Ah, <sighs> uh, Cesaro, please. This guy is a fucking idiot. Don't, oh God. Okay, come on. Our school uniforms are the traditional dress of the Russian people. I, I had no idea. And I had no idea a detective could get something so wrong. I took a photograph of the victim and the message that I might analyze it for possible hidden details. This, 
This was taken immediately after the young man was discovered before the body was removed. Yes, Kazuma had already been taken away when I woke up. This is the first time I've actually seen him like this. Are you all right, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, um, yes, thank you. The photograph of the crime scene has been entered in the court record, yes. Can I ask you something, Mr. Sholmes? What, pray? You mentioned Russia before as well, didn't you? You know, when you said I was a fearsome revolutionary fleeing from a Ru from Russia and all of that. Ah, oh, yes, the train of reasoning that led me to the truth. Would you mind explaining that train of reasoning to me, do you think? Um, certainly, if that interests you, I'm not even going to try to say that. How many times? I'm not Russian, and I don't speak Russian. Now your deduction just now. Uh, can we talk about your deduction before? The thing you concluded about me, I mean. Ah, oh, the now famously accurate, troubling predicament you find yourself in? Shut up. Actually, it was the other details I was uh, more hoping to discuss. You know, the merciless Russian revolutionary and assassin of 16th part. Ah, uh, yes, the more sordid details. It was a fairly commonplace deduction. Here we have this morning's paper. The main headline reads... Revolutionary Velen Borshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. I don't look anything like that fucking man. This vessel made port call at Shanghai yesterday, and last night the young Russian was murdered. It's Japanese. Since when was Kazuma a Russian? It sounds like Mr. Sholmes has concluded he was Russian because of what Kazuma Sama wrote on the floor. It was a simple act of reasoning to realize that the culprit of this crime was the same merciless revolutionary. One who would kill the very man who helped him to escape after his true identity was discovered. Yes, you, villain Borshevik. No, 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 how could it be me? I don't look anything like this man. Just look at his face. Well, you are a fearsome revolutionary after all. <laughs> Therefore, you have no doubt learnt to revolutionize your appearance as well. That's... That's not what that means! I hate this man and his train of thought so much. Ah, oh, please. And I might add, your name does not appear on the ship's passenger list. Need I say more? Well, that's because I'm a stowaway. What about the other details? The 16 victims of assassination and blowing up the Crystal Tower? Ah yes, the journalist clearly interviewed the man and printed all those particulars in the article. The deeds the man has perpetrated thus far and those he is plotting. Yes, everything about this revolutionary Bo Bolshevik was included. There can be no mistake. Do, do revolutionaries usually agree to interviews with newspaper uh, reporters though? And what about the part where you said I was just... Oh, uh, what about the part where you said I was just returning from Afghanistan? Also quite clearly stated here in the article. Bolshevik is recently returned after a period of subversive activities in a war-torn region of Afghanistan. Where even is it, anyway? This Afghanistan place. Here, take the paper for yourself, as a little memento of this great deduction. Oh, um, thank you. I've absorbed all that it is of interest to me within its pages, but I see no rubbish bin nearby. The article about the revolutionary has been entered in the court record. Yeah. God. And you may well find the article on the back page of interest as well. In the back? Cast your eye over it sometime if the interest takes you. So you may need some time to interpret, okay. Hmm, this is interesting. Have you found something relevant, Naruhodo-san? Well, no, I... I mean, it looks like it might be interesting. I can't read a single word, I'm afraid. Your phone is alive! We... we fixed it! Maybe it just needed time to sleep. Nor can I, but look at this picture. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, do you think? She is very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? 
I, I don't know. I can't make any sense of it. I'm glad you've noticed this article. Ah. Yeah, I don't know. That is weird. Well, hopefully it doesn't do that again, because it's not fun when your phone just stops working. Ah. Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. Oh, thank you. Pops up everywhere, this Mr. Sholmes. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavitch Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the famous dancer was reported missing. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. Why are Russian names so hard to remember? It would appear the woman was in costume when she was found to be missing from her dressing room. Wearing the diamond tiara you see pictured, which is worth some 20,000 rubles. Oh, how much is 20,000 rubles? I have no idea, uh, but I'm quite sure it must be an unbelievable sum of money. Susanna san's eyes are shining like diamonds themselves. The tiara is the property of the Novavitch Ballet. It would seem the director's beside herself with worry. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The company is most anxious to recover both Miss Pavlova and the valuable tiara. They've requested international assistance at all ports with sailings to Great Britain. Could this be another case of a Russian fleeing his or her country? It does seem to be the Russian thing to do. Oh wow, racist. I'm not even going to dignify that with a response, Mr. Naruhodo, yeah. Okay, so somebody disappeared with an expensive... Tiara. I'm afraid I can't read a word of Russian. No, me neither. I have no idea what it says. A pair of you floundering is a sorry sight. Allow me to offer some assistance. The article on the front page of this newspaper is concerned. Yeah, it reads right. Yeah, he leaves via Shanghai. It reveals also that those who see the man's beard with their own eyes never live to tell the tale. Oh my goodness, he is fearsome. Well, presumably the newspaper photographer was all right, wasn't he? The solution is obvious, of course. If he despises his beard to that degree, he needs to shave it off. I'm, I'm not quite sure that's the problem, Mr. Sholmes. Yeah, okay, well, goodbye. Was he trying to, was, was, were they trying to write something else? No, uh, let's back up. Okay. It's all written in Russian. I couldn't hope to read it, but I suppose it wouldn't hurt to glance at the article. Maybe there might be a picture or two. Okay, Jesus, thank you. I swear, I feel like we've been talking to this guy for like 20 goddamn minutes already. Before we started talking, you were examining Kazuma's desk, weren't you? Kazuma? Ah, yes, the victim. Hey, Beth! Welcome, how are you doing? I see that you woke up at, um... an earlier time than usual? Okay. I, yeah, I just looked. I, I just looked at your your Discord because I was like, I figured you would have said something about being awake at. This is your normal. Yeah, that's what I figure. Well, welcome to the world of being awake. I'm glad that your your schedule is is doing slightly better now. Oh yeah, and I <laughs> I shared that meme that I put in the that Discord like everywhere because I was like, oh man, this is. If this isn't a man on the internet, I don't know what is. Did you notice anything useful? Anything at all? We're dealing, this man's name is Herlock Sholmes. A absolutely no relation to Sherlock Holmes, who is a entity that's under like copyright or something like that. And yeah, I, I already don't like him because he's saying I'm a Russian who's killed 16 people. And I'm like, I'm not a Russian, I'm a Japanese. Like, schoolboy, please. Go away. Observe for a moment the desktop of the victim. Yeah? We see that the victim was engaged in penning some text. London Diary. Kazuma was keeping notes of the trip. 
Oh, is Sherlock and... Maybe they just were like, you know what, we just want to make somebody really silly that's kind of based off of him, but not him at all. Okay. I know! Like, it's already... Uh, this is the second case! And uh, it, it's, I was just like, they're pulling a Mia on us. Where they're just like, oh, hey, here's a character that you're going to really enjoy. They're really great. And then the next case, they're like, oh, by the way, that, that thing you loved, it's dead. Figure out why it happened. And we're just like, w excuse me? Yeah. You know, I always thought that Sherlock, I, I wasn't sure if Sherlock was public domain. Or, I always thought that you had to like, if you had a character named Sherlock, he had to be kind of like an asshole or something. But I guess it's kind of like, like Winnie the Pooh apparently is public domain as long as you don't draw him with his shirt on because apparently red shirt Pooh is like a Disney thing. I don't know. Why do Chuck? Not yet. I'm, I'm still in the investigation phase, so I probably won't meet him until we actually go into our, our second trial. Because the first trial, it was a um, ancestor of pain. The usual, like, first trial dude that you stomp all over because he sucks. But I'm pretty sure we'll run into that person soon if... If, if we're gonna get into, like, the real serious business. The funny thing is, the first trial, I was also accused of murder. I have been accused of murder again, and I'm like, man, how many cases am I going to be accused of murder <laughs> in? Sweetheart. But he says I'm, I don't like him. He's dumb. He's real dumb. And Suzato believes him, and I'm like, Suzato, he's saying some really dumb stuff. Don't, don't listen to him. Ah, oh, but I wasn't allowed to read it because Suzato bodied me. Yeah, that's why- that's not- it's terrible! <laughs> that doesn't make it great! That makes it bad! It makes me mad when he- he says these things and I'm like, no, none of those are true! And Suzato's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, you're a Russian killer! You've killed 16 people! And I'm like, no, please, Suzato, take like two seconds to think about it and you'll understand why that's not a good idea. I don't think you should read his private writings. It could upset people. Tragic. And something you ought to perhaps elucidate before the act of reading. So he already read everything. You, you mean you've read it already? It is my business to know what other people do not. Yes, believe it or not, I know a smattering of Japanese. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, you're about to know what a Suzato takedown is. Suzato-san, aren't you going to throw the detective with one of your trademark uh, takedowns? I'm sorry, Naruhoto-san. What on earth do you mean? Life is so unfair. The steampunk outfit is... <laughs> I know, in his, his weird goggles that I don't actually know what they do, but he lights them up sometimes. Anyway, to return to the matter at hand, namely this diary belonging to the victim. It would appear the final sentence is incomplete, as if the author were cut short. Tell me, what is the nature of the writing? Pray be precise as to details. Oh, but I thought you knew Japanese. A smattering, dear boy, a smattering. Sayonara, bonsai, mikado, nado, nado. I trust you're suitably impressed. Get the fuck out of here with your, like, 4chan weeb. You, you make my, uh, my, you make my Kokoro go doki doki bullshit, Sholmes. Go away. Uh, but this diary is littered with complicated looking characters of which I can, I can read precisely none. He could have said, no, hey, this is true. He could have said Naruto. No. <laughs> so, what was all that showing off about before then? If you would be so kind as to show me, I would be happy to read it to you, Mr. Sholmes. Why can't I read it? I'm much obliged, my dear madame. <laughs> the final entry here in Kazuma Sama's diary consists of just two short sentences. The first reads 1 23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. 
A whistling sound? Hmm. These are very deep waters. Pray, go on. The second sentence reads, 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Speckled band? What on earth does that mean? I have no idea. I've never heard that expression before. Hmm, the ventilator grill, you say? The man was presumably referring... to the lattice there on the wall which connects to the adjoining cabin. Holy crap, you made a deduction that makes sense. Yes, the adjoining cabin. Kazuma's diary has been entered into the court record, yeah. Speckled band. What was that Russian wearing? So I believe I've given you enough to consider for the time being at least. Ah, do you have somewhere to go? As it happens, the victim's writings in his diary have piqued my interest. The matter warrants further investigation, I believe. And if I am too long, the seasickness takes hold. Um. Oh, I suppose you're thinking of investigating the cabin next door, which the ventilator connects to. Great detectives are a curious breed. Our minds rebel at stagnation. We crave mental exaltation. Just say yes. So yes, I intend to investigate. Hence the truth will become clear soon enough. Uh, do you think perhaps that we could go with you? Hmm, no, that would be somewhat complicated. What, but why? A simple glance at your wrist should reveal the answer. Oh, uh, these. After all, you're the prime suspect in this matter. <laughs> no. Yeah, because of you, you dumb bastard. There's no point in trying to turn it into a question. You're the one who decided I was the culprit in the first place. Yeah. Whatever do you mean? I have no recollection of naming you as the culprit at any point. But you just called me a Russian killer. You must be joking. You, you just said it only a moment ago. Dear me, you are clearly misguided. I would have no cause to say such a thing. Well, uh, actually, Mr. Sholmes, I did hear you say that, too. You're, uh, quite sure? Well, that's, uh, very strange. I wouldn't have said you had the face of a criminal, you know? Not really. So what, were you looking at my knees before? Some great detective you are. Well, anyway, that was then and this is now. What do you mean? What I mean, sir, is this. If you are the culprit, then you must play the part more convincingly. Roll over and accept your fate. No! <laughs> now he's just being plain rude. And off he goes, having just laughed in my face. Sense of humor's as twisted as his name. Naru Hodo-san, what are you just standing there for? Hmm? We must go and investigate the cabin next door as well. Aren't you forgetting something? What about these? Oh, hiya. Uh, d excuse me. After Kazuma-sama spent his dying moment struggling to leave us a clue, you're willing to give up. He told me we couldn't go. You're just going to roll over and accept your fate? Ugh, as if you gave me any choice on the rolling part. I think we still have some investigation to finish off here first, don't we? Let's carry on examining what we can in this cabin while we wait for the chance to slip next door. Good idea. The situation doesn't look good for me but there are still things I can do to help myself. And I owe it to Kazuma to do everything I can to find a way out of this and bring the real culprit to justice. Oh, well, that reminds me. I, You know what? Shit. Actually, okay, well, I'm terrible because, Baff, I was going to be like, wait, are you going to try to do a stream today or not? But I, I forget you put up, like, schedules for things. Oh, wait, except it's the, never mind.
I don't know if you had a new schedule for things. Because I know you hadn't been able to stream or do anything because of the food poisoning and then just kind of like getting your sleep schedule back to a more manageable place. Not today. D&D &D tomorrow and you're streaming the next. OK, gotcha, gotcha. But at least this is a head start to kind of like. Get back into the rhythm of like waking up, doing your thing and sleeping at a at your normal times. Is that? Is something wrong? Naruto san? That's the fucking that's the guy. Oh, no, it's just that crewman standing by the door. Can't help feeling like I've seen him somewhere before. Yeah. Oh, yes, you're right. He does look familiar. Excuse me, sir. Are you a sailor now? Yes. Uh, what can I do for you? No, so funny. I know. People. Oh, he's only 34. Dang. Not a person in the world who hasn't heard of this famous great detective. Not a person except me, apparently. That's definitely what's his face. It's definitely you, the policeman. I recognize that face, but but it can't be. <coughs> OK, D seriously, what's wrong with you? It is. I, I didn't know you were here, Inspector Hosanaga. Hosanaga, sorry, I forgot his name. You really should stop wiping the blood with like white cloth. Hello again. What are you doing here? I think that should be my line. I was so stunned when I saw you, my heart stopped. Nearly stopped, I hope. I received some special orders to go undercover as a member of the crew and board this ship. Again? You certainly seem to enjoy undercover work, Inspector. If there's anything I can do to help you, please ask. Never expected to see this man on board. But perhaps his presence can help me out of this hopeless situation if he doesn't die first. So what are your special orders this time, Inspector? Yes, and why are you dressed as a member of the crew? I'm so sorry. Hmm? That's confidential. This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. What are you talking about? For, for what? My orders were to act as a Sogisan's bodyguard. So this guy fails at like every task he's assigned to. Is he supposed to be like gumshoe, but like feeble and sickly? It was Minister of Justice Jigoku who pushed for this overseas study tour to go ahead. And he entrusted me with ensuring that asogi san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. What? Assassinated? How could that have even been a possibility? I'm not sure. But these are complicated times. There are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Minister Jigoku said we should be prepared for all eventualities. This is incredible. I, I don't believe it. Kazuma-san was uh, ass assassinated. Obviously, we couldn't give Asogi-san a visible security escort. Which is why I'm undercover now, posing as one of the crew. I see. And I didn't take my eyes off him the entire time we've been on board, from morning until night, every day. Until yesterday. But I never imagined it would happen here, inside his own cabin. Not here on the first class deck. I failed miserably at my assignment, and Asogi-san is dead as a result. I'm a disgrace. All I can do is humbly apologize. Specter. So if there's anything at all I can do to help now, just say the word. Permission to investigate, yeah. We're doing what we can to investigate Kazuma's death ourselves. I thought you might be. You didn't do it, did you? You're not the killer. Of course not! 
We'd really like to investigate the cabin next door. Yes, so we need to be allowed out of this cabin. I'm sorry. What? You've been deemed a risk to the ship's safety. If you move even to touch the handle of the cabin door, that stormy looking seaman there would surely snap your neck in two. I suppose I'm not just a stowaway now. They think I'm a murderer as well. Would it be possible to give me something to work with, do you think? I'm going to need something persuasive. What do you mean? If I had a solid reason why the next door cabin should be investigated, for example, I'd do everything I could to persuade the captain to allow it. Really, I'd lay my life on the line if I had to. But I don't see how... There may be a way. What? Really? Think of how you tried to persuade me of your innocence now, Ruhodo-san, by presenting me with a piece of evidence that you had already had in your possession. Evidence? It's just the same as when you're in court. You must have done it many times during your trial. Simply select Present Panel and choose some evidence that Inspector Hosanaga could use. The evidence that would give us a viable reason to investigate the next door cabin, is it? Alright, yes. I, I think I might know what we can use. If I can present the detective. Okay. Probably the information about the princess. Or the... Or maybe it's actually the diary. What's that? It's Kazuma's diary, because it does talk about the vent which is connected to the other room. Just before he died, Kazuma-sama wrote something rather strange in his diary. Strange? In what way? He wrote, what looks like some kind of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? That is strange. Yes, we're still trying to work out what he meant by that, but what I'd like to know is... Don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? Hmm, you're very astute, Inspector. The, that ventilator clearly joins to the next door cabin. That's right, so if we could investigate in there, we might be able to work out what the speckled band was. All right then. Oh! I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given me strict orders to guard the scene of the crime, you see. I'll have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? You're willing to do that? Yes, as long as you don't leave the first class cabin area. I'm afraid I can't remove those can handcuffs, though. But what about the captain? Aren't you going against his direct orders? <clears throat> I am a man of my word. And I promise you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it takes to convince the captain. After all, I failed to keep asogi san safe. This is the least I can do. Thank you. Let's seize the moment then, Naruhodo-san. Yeah, okay, let's move. All right. Passageway that connects the first class cabins on the SS Bertha. Okay, first we must get out of here. Is that a mouse trap? Ooh, finally out of that cabin. I have to admit, this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be. And this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed. Azuma-sama was being sent on this study tour by the government. That's why he was being put up in a first-class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steerage. Really? That must be awful. Oh, look over there. That's another crewman keeping watch. And he looks enormous, even if he is sitting down. Actually, yeah, I was, at I, I was gonna blame him for the murder, but at the same time... There's absolutely no way he could have fit through that vent. Unless he killed him, left, and the scrawnier one came through the vent and locked the door and then left. But that seems kind of, that seems like a lot of legwork. The door next to him leads to the second class accommodation. I suppose he's making sure that no one comes in here who shouldn't. 
You suppose? Like people in handcuffs? Naruhodo-san, you look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. I would have thought you'd be used to the ship by now. We've been at sea for two weeks already. I've been in the room the entire time. Well, yes, I know, but the thing is, I was inside Kazuma's trunk when I first came aboard. And ever since then, I've been shut up inside that little wardrobe. Wait, where did he pee? Where did he poop? Is there a bathroom in there? Maybe they each have their own bathroom. Must have been very trying time for you. Please, don't give me that pitying look. Wait, I want to go back in here, because I'm seriously... Where, if there is a bathroom, where is it? Where did I, I, it's important, I need to know where I pooped. Well, I guess we'll figure it out later. Maybe that'll be a question. Seriously though, what is that? It looks like a mouse trap, but there's not cheese. What is on it though? Ah, a trap for catching mice. Yes, we have plenty of those back home in Japan. Although they seem to be using a lump of, lump of chalk or something as bait. Maybe it's on the wall. Oh, true, maybe. Let me see. Yes, I think that's what is called cheese. It's made from the milk of cows. Cheese? I wonder what that tastes like. Wait, what? Japan has cheese, right? Did Japan not have cheese back in the day? I'm sorry, I mean... But you can't eat it, Naruhodo-san. The trap will snap on your fingers. Really, but uh, I suppose you're right. What? Really? Huh. Cheese isn't used much. I mean, this is true. I guess they tend to just use a lot of other things like spices and vegetables and things. Huh. God, that's, that's really weird to think about. But I also live in America, and especially in Texas, where cattle production is like crazy high, so we're all about dairy products, so. It's kind of a European thing. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Huh. You aren't actually going to try it, were you? All I've had to eat for the past couple of weeks is cause Kazuma's leftovers. You don't know how hungry I've been in that wardrobe. Or you, I'll find a little snack for you later. Thanks. What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? That is the emergency alarm. It's probably best not to touch it. Oh, an alarm. It says, press only in times of emergency. Looks as though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, this I have to see. Ooh, what are you doing, Naruhodo-san? You mustn't touch it. But, but this is an emergency situation. Just look at these handcuffs. Oh, come on. You know full well that's not what the alarm is for. If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in an even worse situation. I wish everything would just stop, the ship included. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one with the ventilator. The, the one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma Sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. Um. Hello. Oh, um. Excuse me. We, um, need to get inside this cabin here. This sailor's eyes speak volumes. They're clearly saying, keep out. Yeah, that belly button. The the, the little hair scrawls and everything. Uh, that's what I wrote on the sign we put over the wardrobe doors. Although this man's version is definitely more effective. Doesn't look like he's going to let us pass. Hmm, that's a problem. Well, let's look at the ship, I guess. 
This looks like a plan of the SS Buria. Mm, it shows each deck. Look. Buria is a large scale steamship with a triple skinned hull. What a marvel of engineering. Well, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but, uh. How is it that such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? Oh, that's really quite simple, Naruhodo-san. It is? Well, consider the Japanese archipelago. The islands of Japan. Yes, they're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth many, many times larger than the ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. Oh, well, yes and no. Well, I suppose so. I thought that she was going to come up with, like, some kind of, like, sciency answer, but, you know. That's a huge book on the top of the table there. There's a pen next to it. Yes, that looks like the ship's log. Shall we have a little look through it? The writing is so neat and precise. Every detail about the voyage has been meticulously recorded. Hmm, you wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. And nothing. No reaction at all. Uh, I thought he might appreciate the compliment. I'm not sure that rough and ready is much of a compliment, Naruhodo-san. Even to a sailor. Anyway, last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there is nothing to report. Hmm, which seems... Sketchy. Hello. Um, excuse me, but, uh, could I ask you something? You? You little stowaway murderer? That wasn't a good start, was it? All right, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask something of you? You? You little third-class lady's maid? Oh. We seem to have caught the sailor on a bad day, suzato san I am not sailor. My mother gave me name. I am senior crewman, Biff Stroganov. Now I want Beef Stroganoff, so uh, fuck you twice over, Ace Attorney, but seriously, come on! God, they just don't get any better. The names. <clears throat> Whew. The best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. Okay, well then I can talk to you. Uh, Mr. Stroganoff, about the first class cabin area. Here we are in finest part of Beria Steamship for very important persons. Uh, what sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret, many important persons. That is why I'm always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But somehow I let stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in ocean, but Stroganoff is not animal. Thank you? If I may, I was wondering, is the cabin next to Mr. Asogi's currently occupied? Ah, that! Um, Suzara-san, did you understand that? Uh, oh, that is da. Okay, I wasn't sure. Uh, it sounded like, or it sounded like da? I think it's probably Russian for yes, or no. Genius. It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Well, sounds like there is somebody in the next door cabin at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. That's, okay, well, let's ask you about this. Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Asogi's? His name is Mr. Grimsby Roylott. Grimsby Roylott. 
I was trying to figure out if that's a pun, but it doesn't really sound like it unless I'm missing it. He is very important Western gentleman. A Western gentleman? Do not think about it! He has nothing to do with the murder of the student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roylott is authentic Western gentleman. Such a man would have no interest in lowly students from insignificant Far East islands. Wow, there's so much racism. That was harsh. Did you tell us when Mr. Roylott came aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks now and I've been in Cosmo's cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins, he must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. Okay, thanks. Last night. Um, are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganoff? Da, all the time, so criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is sad about student boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? Pet. Um, Suzaro-san, did you understand that? It was clearly a no. Was it? Was it though? I saw nothing unusual, nothing at all. And you didn't hear any strange noises or sense anything was wrong in some way? Oh, I don't like how you looked away there. I said no! Sorry! I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for a moment there, yeah. Yeah. This is enough. I cannot say more now. Oh, it is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to Cabin. Uh, I, yes, all right. Bulkhead to second class area staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain. Or as English say, when the pigs fly. Ah, uh, yes, I understand. Thank you, sir. Good. Now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. Well, didn't I already investigate it pretty properly? Can I look at the ship's log again? Yeah, this is ship's log. Look through it again. Okay, neat and precise. Beautiful handwriting. Yeah, yeah, nothing to report last night, but... That's wrong. Okay, I'm gonna look at this door again. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma Sano wrote he was a speckled band. Maybe who's that? Yeah, let's ask. Shlutadoop. No answer. But Herlock Sholmes is definitely in there, I thought. Right of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. Ah! Okay. What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream. It must have been a woman, I guess. Stand aside. Hello? I'm about to break the door down. Mr. Sholmes? I shan't be stopped. When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking doors off their hinges. <laughs> really? Please, uh, wait, Mr. Sholmes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. Oh, it doesn't? Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What, pray, can I kick? I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress relief. Yeah, okay. First class cabin number two. Hey! Who, who are you? A Western gentleman? That man looks Russian to me. We, uh, we heard a woman scream. A woman? Don't be absurd. As you can see, there's nobody here but me in this cabin. Uh-huh. 
true, and this old man does appear to be the only person in here. But in that case, who just screamed? Get out, all of you, now! Uh, please excuse the intrusion, but you're Mr. Grimsby Roylot, I believe. Yes, that's me, and you are? I am the one and only, the actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. I am a great detective among great detectives, one who adorns the covers of popular magazines, no less. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. The man uses that magazine like a business card. A detective? Hm. I do not trust detectives. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So might I be bold as bold as to ask you to open that small traveling case? What? Don't be stupid. How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk? Don't look at me! Oh my, did... Did you just see that, Mr. Naruhodo? Uh, yes, the case just shook! Leave, now! Otherwise, I'll call the steward! So this is Kazuma's neighbor, Mr. Grimesby Roylot. I must be Rylight. I must be Rylight. I'm trying to think if there's a pun in there. There's no doubt about it. This strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find some clues before that burly sailor returns. I know you told us to leave, but I'm gonna... Ah, a herlock! What are you doing? Um, do you have a moment, please, uh, Mr. Sholmes? You need only address me as Sholmes. That's what I just did, isn't it? Well, um, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? Why, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed, I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great powers of deduction into service. Is that so? Oh! And it would seem that hour is upon us now. Am I mistaken? Well, um, no, actually, you're spot on for once. Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roylot, is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why? The truth, of course! Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Oh yes, please! Oh boy. If he calls him a Japanese schoolboy, I'm gonna fucking just... burn my switch. Well then, what you are about to see may well astound you. For I am about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. Would this man be a more hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From time to time it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness? or Russian on account of his dubiousness. That's inc that sounds incredibly racist. Actually, Herlock Sholmes, you need to calm down. 
I, I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you, or anyone. That's right, and Mr. Sholmes, uh, I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read, it is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shh, I must have complete silence. But what are you doing? Why are you peering at my face like that? Uh, just as I thought. Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. Hmm? There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts, actually. What if it's actually the ballerina in there? And she's wearing a disguise, because that looks like a very disguisey beard. I don't remember what her name is. Mr. Roylot, I have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. But what do you mean? Number one, your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? And number two, the other conclusion I have drawn, you are, at this very moment, no less in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you have been discovered. Does it not? Dog! Oh, Naruhoro-san. I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Sholok, er, Mr. Sholmes's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction. Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What? What ineffable, uh, what ineffable twaddle. Who says that? Who says that? Oh, yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. can hardly believe it, but all the color is drained from Mr. Royalot's face. Looks like somehow both of Mr. Sholmes' conclusions were right. How? How could you? Yeah, twaddle. Who said? Okay, what does twaddle even mean? I isn't that just like poppycock or balderdash or any other word for stuff that's bullshit? Twaddle. I swear, if this gives me... Okay, trivial or foolish speech or writing. Nonsense. It's just nonsense. It's literally nonsense. Okay. Now you know. If you ever hear somebody say bullshit, you can be like, What? frivolous twaddle and they'll be like what and you'll be like huh uneducated buffoon and then you just kind of leave it at that and then they'll never recover from that financially or mentally how could i possibly know such things you wish to say very well then i shall elucidate oh please don't I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. No, I don't need that. So I do cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. No, let's not. I didn't purchase a ticket. I want off this train. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. But they're wrong. <laughs> no! I am 
is a foot? What is this? Oh, topic one. Old man's identity. So the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylot. Obviously what catches the eye in the first place. Is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? Also, hi Andy. Yes, it is Sholmes. I have been exposed to Sholmes. The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard, you sport. Now, moving on. The question then begged is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylot? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper. In particular, the fascinating front page article. Also, hi, cat. And don't, don't shear the beard. Come on, look at it. It's a magnificent beard. Hope you're doing well, princess. Ah, which it would appear you have all read also, Mr. Roylot. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. Okay, so the issue is they found that newspaper and they were going to cut it up because it's got their identity on it. And they don't want people to find out about them. And that's why they screamed. And then we rushed in before they were able to cut it up. And also there's something in that suitcase. Sure, it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. Yeah, you keep getting it off, bro. It's not that. It's not that. That's the chick in disguise. Which is why we keep getting the question marks. In translation, the headline reads, Revolutionary Villain Bo Bolshevik Flees Russia via Shanghai. I haven't told you about lounging around. Aw. I'm glad that you like it. And I'm glad that it's keeping you warm. And like I said, you look fantastic in it. That, and many things, but... That's besides the point. <clears throat> As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses an extremely copious beard, but and also the face is different. That's those are two completely different people. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before you gave it away. No, they put that on to act like they were them because I don't know that actually both of those are bad ideas. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, villain Borshevik. Not that I have heard of you myself, you understand. No, that's not right, actually. Oh, now topic two. That was completely wrong. Okay, so this has to be like the big... This has to be the big um, uh, thing that... That Dez was talking about. Like, this is the new mechanic in the game. Because we have to prove it wrong. Because Sholmes is dumb, so we have to fix his dumb reasoning. Yeah, Sholmes is... It's just a little. Now, as for my second conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime? Over there! Oh yes, Mr. Roylot. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Ah! And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. I mean, true. It's like when you're trying really hard to not like stare at a really attractive person, but you do it anyway and you're like, I hope they don't notice that I'm looking. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. Okay, that's wrong. It is time I think that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. 
No, I refuse. What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation, a young lady, perhaps. One slight enough to fit therein. Don't be absurd. And what, pray, would the identity of this young lady in the traveling case be? Is it you, Cat? Actually, I wouldn't want you to, like, squeeze into something that small. That seems like it would be uncomfortable. I'd rather if you just were in a room-sized room. Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup de oh, 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 I, I betrays you. I don't... words... Once again, we need only follow your furtive glances to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can equally be found on the pages of this newspaper. But there is another, more st stimulating article. Is it breathable? I mean, it, it looks... maybe. Maybe they poked holes in it. If we turn from the fleeting, fling revolutionary to the back page. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlo Pavlova. Snapping of a young ballerina. I don't think that's right. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this Russian enigma, Elementsky. What? Hmm. <laughs> Cesara san, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Of, wait, that's a cake? Okay, you gotta show me this cake now, cat. Now that I know that it's a cake, because I do like cake. Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Sholmes' brilliant deductions, you know. Uh, but that did seem a little different somehow. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Sholmes, could you come over here a moment? Pray, what can I do for you? Uh, it's about your deductions. Uh, would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, there's the newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but, uh... These two men look nothing like each other. Yeah. Ah, yes, I recall our discussion earlier, and at the time, I believe I told you that the man is a revolutionary, well able to revolutionize his own appearance. Is that how that fucking works, Sholmes? You dumb... We're in, like, the fucking 18th century. People don't do that. Or are we in the 19th century? The 19th century would be the 1800s, right? And the 20th century, because we're in the 21st century now. We're in the 19th century! We don't have plastic surgery! Uh, in fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Royalette does look more like this man than you do. That's not the point. Yeah, exactly, that's racist. Sholmes is incredibly racist. Maybe he's an imposter, or he got hit on that. No, I'm okay. Come on, it's it's pretty obvious that he is the ballerina dressed up as your everyday Russian man. I guess as long as you have the hat and the beard and glasses, you're just I don't know. And another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina, indeed a truly startling revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance, it, it is too small. Clearly. You 
Be lucky to fit a five-year-old child in that case, even if you pushed really hard. Now I'm imagining somebody shoving a child into there and just being like, just, just lay down, it's okay. You can come out in like an hour. The Pavlova cake, oh, it was named that? So, wow, so they were actually, they did their research when they did this. Anna Pavlova though, not Nicolina, which is probably what they were kind of playing off of. Dang. And then they have a Russian man named Beef Stroganoff. What the fuck, Capcom? You you put in like a pinch of realism and then you fucking give us Beef Stroganoff, the Russian man. <sighs> and uh, no, not Pearls. Well, Pearls was nine when we first met her, so. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? No, she's, I mean, you don't know. No, the young lady is 15. No, I didn't know. How could I? Hmm, well, if she's 15, then 10 years worth of her would be poking out from the case. <laughs> Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. What? Does she have no arms or legs? A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain litheness in their bodies. That sounds like snake oil. Uh, did it also increase their libido and make women love them? Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it would surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of that small case, no. Oh dear, you might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Sholmes. Yeah, Suzato, are you finally starting to realize that this guy is not as smart as you thought he was? Ugh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. Uh, Mr. Naruhodo, something's occurred to me about Mr. Sholmes' deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes cut to the heart of a matter almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and his logic that seems a little off. Your idea of a little may be a little off itself, Miss Suzato. It's just one or two key words in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Yeah, so he can publish another book about the great Mr. Sholmes? No. Hmm, switch some key words in his deductions. Yes, but very tactfully. I feel, uh, sure if we could do that, we'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Sholmes' great deduction, which would be our genius, not his. Precisely the thought that was going through my own mind. No, it wasn't. This man is a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wonder that every time I talk to you. Not that funny. As I said, dumb. Yeah, he's just dumb. Maybe Sholmes is a constant. I mean, I, I, there's something going on in there. Oh, and you, my good fellow. Sorry. Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists. <gasps> no more handcuffs! Ah, where are your handcuffs? So he knows some sleight of hand. Huh? How did you? <laughs> I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our dance of deduction. Hmm. I don't believe it. Mr. Sholmes, you are a marvel. You just said he was an idiot earlier. You can't take that back. And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. No, I don't want them. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Yeah. There's a lot of shaking. Maybe it's the seasickness. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. Okay, let's redo it. That's it, yeah. So the dubious? Yeah, obviously.
Okay, so we know that's good. <clears throat> okay, that's where we, yeah, that's like, hey. Hmm, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. Doesn't quite sit right with me, though. Doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roylot, either. Which means, I suppose, that the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a key word around here, Naruhodo-san, and see if that helps matters. All right, but, uh, how? Yeah, she tactfully said he was an idiot. This is true. I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Roylot. I wonder if it's really his beard that he intended to use those shears on. Exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Sholm's deduction better, then what? Then I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, Naruhodo-san. Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around in the first, or in that last sentence. What exactly was Mr. Rallet really gonna use those enor enormous shears for? Uh, uh. Oh, 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 golden locks. Hello? <laughs> Hello? What the? What's this? Wow, I like how we're doing this to die. Is, uh, wow, how is this happening? It looks like a cascade of stunning golden locks because it's the lady. No, 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 no. The color is not the point. The point is, what's it doing on the back of Mr. Royalot's head? And how is it growing out from underneath his thick black hair? Well, yes, that's true. So it's stunningly beautiful and stunningly surprising. Something's definitely not right here. Yes. Present! Yes! Golden Locks. Oh no, I'm doing the fucking snap now. What is this, end game? You were on the verge of using those sh the shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. Uh, indeed, you have identified the precise detail I was uh, intending to expose. Shut up, Sholmes. Such lush golden hair certainly does not benefit an old man. You're not a man at all, you're a woman. And judging from the length and sheen of your hair, one still very much in her youth. Yeah, sure, Sholmes, sure. Oh, no, no. Uh, he is the ballerina, yeah. If only I'd managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. The question then begged is this, why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent locks? Yeah, she did. Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. No, shut up, Sholmes. I'm on a roll. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea the old man was really a young woman in disguise. Did you? I knew. Shut up. What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise. Naruhodo-san, you're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry, yeah, I'm enjoying sticking it to the man. You look like you're in your elements as you dance around the room deducing the facts with Mr. Sholmes. I'm just doing what we agreed. I I'm not having fun or anything. It's strictly business, not straight through. Yes, yes, I understand, say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part of Mr. Sholmes' deduction, shall we? The evidence that he's picked out doesn't fit the facts at all now. No, that's true, given that Mr. Roylot is actually a woman. Uh, exactly. He, or rather she, can't possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else, something that fits the facts as we now understand them. For some reason, this woman needed to try to hide her true identity. Feel as though I've ever... Yes, it's the other article about her stealing a goddamn tiara. Yes. It's 
excuse me, it's my turn. The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. That's right, you've hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavitch Ballet disappears from Shanghai. It would appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of the Novavitch Pri Ballet's prima ballerina. Miss Nikolina Pavlova. Ah, don't drop those like that. That's dangerous. Oh, God, please. Ah, jeez. Take it off. Take it off. Oh. Uh, I mean, just the, the hat. Oh, oh, dang, she cute. You're right. My real name is Nina. I mean, Nikolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. Okay, she must have been wearing like four coats. A ballerina on the run. Dun, 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 dun. Solved. Okay, so you kidnapped yourself. But the hat stab, I know. Well, it's a really big hat, so she probably doesn't have any brain damage. Now, as for my second conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. Yeah, the crime of theft. And the proof of this crime, over here! Oh yes, Miss Pavlova. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes show. Yeah, fine, I show you this, 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 the truth. And so we seek lies, uh, yeah. Yes, the traveling case. And it's like, no. No, not the traveling case. Oh, it's a ballerina, and she's right in front of her eyes, so clearly she can't be inside the traveling case as well. You dumb bastard. No, that's right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? Hmm, I can see I'm going to have to step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. You seem to look pleased now, Rihodo. So yeah, put this man in his place. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sholmes? Stop it. Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Oh, it's behind the chair! Of course, wow! Wow, look at this dazzling tiara! Never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, no, Rahodo san, try it on! No! What? No! Isn't it usually girls who wear tiaras? Wouldn't you like to try it on? Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does this tiara look familiar? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. Yeah, present yes. that shit. Yes, that tiara! More to stomp on Shums than Dan- Exactly. <gasps> <clears throat> I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in the Novavitch Ballet, is it not? I bet that the thing inside the case is like a dog or a cat or something she brought along. Indeed, it would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary... The crime you have committed is theft. Oh no! Yes, you left your ballet troupe unlawfully taking their precious tiara with you. Yeah, you're not liking that. Huh, adjust your hat. Okay, you're fine. I have no one, no family, no friends. I am all alone and I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from, how do you say? An Earl of Prussia. It belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old, and she's run away all by herself, and she's already getting presents from creepy old men. She must have been extremely lonely. All right, I will tell you everything. There's no point in hiding it now. Come, come, let us not be hasty. What? Yeah, 
There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Wait, what do you mean? What mystery? 20,000 rubles is like, that's really cheap. Well, the question is, how much was 200 euros like 200 years ago? Jeez, I, yeah, I mean, what the hell? You have staunchly refused to open this traveling case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude, that, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish it to remain closed. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um... My dear girl, there's no sense in playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. I beg to differ. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I have ever laid eyes on them. Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup de oil betrays you. Okay, furtive glance. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written on the books on the shelf. He's completely changed tack with his deduction now. I think Mr. Sholmes is adapting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe, but why has he suddenly brought the bookshelf into all this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Yeah! Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case would have been written in a book she doesn't that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true, but still, don't defend him. Miss Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in that direction. I noticed it myself. Then there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. And it must be somewhere in the same area. If that's where her gaze was involuntarily drawn. Agreed, that's the only answer. Okay, something. What is this? This is a charming little picture, isn't it? What is it? Someone climbing a steep mountainside? Or descending one, it seems to me. When you've been on the flat sea for a while, maybe you start seeing hills and mountains and everything. Oh, whoops, I forgot about that quote, but it's true. Okay. I don't wanna look at the books on the shelf. Rules of passage? Maybe. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Buria. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in there. Pets are strictly forbidden. Yeah, because there's something in there that's a pet. I wonder what happens if you break the rules. Oh dear, I'm sure the punishment would be severe, Naruhodo-san. You'd probably be left to drift in the freezing cold ocean or shut inside a tiny wardrobe for days on end. I've actually been serving time for weeks now, have I? Yes! Okay. Yeah, definitely like a little a little dog or cat or something in there. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. Totally what I had meant to say after I talked about the books. I... As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time, but no weapon or other dangerous item would move of its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova. Inside your traveling case is the revolutionary. is the last item listed as forbidden in the vessel's rules of passage, a pet. Ah! What the, are they gonna do the fusion dance now? I don't understand what's happening. Yeah. <gasps> Possession of a prohibited animal. Wow. Deduction complete. Elementary. Team Rocket Ant, I don't know, Cat. It's I've it's really starting to get to me. I think I'm losing my sanity. 
I thought he was going to do that too because he's dumb, but I, I, I guess he finally noticed the train of thought. He jumped onto the train of deduction that I was, I was conducting that. Not him. It was me. So clearly, you aren't who you said you were. No, I am not Grim Z. Roylot. My real name is Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Later that same night, you stole aboard this vessel. Which couldn't have been easy. The Borea is a huge steamship with a vast crew. Could she really have snuck on board without being noticed? In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman, and you intended to sever all links with your past by severing your long hair. Yet to a woman, hair is no trifling matter. I mean, it depends on the woman. You're generalizing again, Sh Sholmes. You do that every time you talk. My personal recommendation is to leave it well alone. Oh, yes. The opinion of a man on the internet. I like your long hair, so you should keep it long for me. Fuck you, Sholmes. Girl, don't lose weight. You look good with an ass. Let women do what they want, Sholmes. Again. So if it was you about to cut off your own hair, who was it that let out the scream we heard from the outside or from outside the cabin? That veritable tinkling of a bell? Why none other than this young lady, naturally. Hmm. More like a full set of pipes, if you ask me. I was so scared when I ran away in Shanghai, I was sure they would come looking for me. That's why I decided to, how do you say? Disgust myself? So that no one would recognize me. As a result, you transformed yourself into that questionable old man. I see. I put on the fur hat and fake beard? Then just before you came in here, I saw in the newspaper, right on the page, there was a picture of me. I was so frightened, I couldn't stop from screaming. Yeah, okay. I knew that if I didn't change my appearance completely, they would find me. So I decided to cut all my hair as fastly as possible. I picked up the scissors in my hand and... At that precise moment, we walked in through the annoyingly unlocked cabin door. Oh yeah, because he really wanted to kick in the door. Things like that, things happen like that sometimes, don't they? Things do indeed happen like that from time to time. Are those two even talking about the same thing? There's just one more thing I'd like to know. What exactly do you have inside your traveling case? You were right. It is my dear friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. Please. Don't tell anyone. If the captain finds out, if you say to any of the crew, your secret is safe with us, I assure you. But in return, you must tell us in as much detail as you can muster about the events of last night. Yes, all right. I will tell you. Well, Mr. Naruhodo? Wasn't it something Mr. Sholmes's... Wasn't it something Mr. Sholmes's great deduction? Hmm. 
There's certainly, yeah. I'm just not entirely sure what. But at least Ms. Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Indeed, it is incredible. Yeah, no thanks to you. I do hope it's a ferret too. I hope it's something kind of exotic. Ah, and one more thing. Oh, yes? What? Observe your wrists. My... No, you put it... You dumb bastard! I don't want these! Ah, your hands are cuffed again. What? But... But how? True to my word, I have restored your shackles. Ugh, when and why? There's still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mr. Naruhodo. I'm sorry to say... It can't be helped at the moment. Can it? Really? Anyway, let's listen to what Ms. Pavlova has to say. I can't go on not knowing. I have to find out what the speckled band that Kazuma Selma wrote about in his diary really was. Let me see. Don't touch! Huh? I will tell you what I know about last night, but please, you must not touch my things. I, how do you say? Forbid it! Well, you should be, young man. What vulgar manners you have. Sorry. You have a theory about the animal? Oh, okay. Walking around in a young lady's private belongings? Neither shall I allow it. I'm pretty sure you would... Yeah, you would totally put your hands in there. Okay, fine. Did you know that someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen told me this morning when I was eating breakfast. The man who died, he was a friend of mine. Oh, that's why we're trying to find out what happened. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you should heard a strange noise, for example. Perhaps people talking. Perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest. Perhaps its steam engine exploded. Perhaps everyone on board would have noticed if that had happened, you dumb piece of shit. Animals like to- Oh, so maybe... I mean, at the beginning, they did say something about a snake, but... I don't know, well... I mean, not saying that you can't have snakes in Russia, but it's also bitterly cold a lot of the time, and snakes are not... They, they're not made for cold. So I wonder if it's something else. Oh, man. But yeah, maybe maybe something got in there and also had the shiny. But something killed bro. Oh, God, what if it was? No, what if it was actually a snake? And it was venomous. Oh, that sounds bad. I hope not. Because they still haven't found the cause of death. We just know he's dead. Wait, 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 but also... He, can, he heard a faint whistling sound, and it's he said it looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. So if it was a snake, and he went to check on it, and it bit him, and then he died from venom, then that's terrible. And he, but also, I don't know if he knows Russian, so I still feel like somebody killed him. And the Russian, the, the thing, the Russian, it said look in the wardrobe, but I don't know. Unless it was like, okay, avenge me, bro. Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? 
I don't know. I'm sorry, but all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they would find me. I didn't notice anything that was happening around me. Oh, I see. Running away. You've run away from your ballet company, haven't you? The Novovich Ballet? Yes. I'm traveling to Great Britain, and from there, I want to go to America. Why would anybody want to go there? I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. You wish to forget? A challenging proposition when you have that striking tiara as a reminder. But the tiara is mine! I need it to live! I have no money of my own. The Novovich Ballet gives us only a little food and water. And we must dance all over the world. I had to run away. I have no choice. If I had stayed, it would have killed me. So you ran away to protect yourself. Yes. And the crew of his ship have all been kind to me. They let me come on board, and they say I could hide in this cabin. If that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova, it creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yes, it does. What do you think about it, Mr. Naruhodo? Me? Oh, well, yes, of course. I think we should hear Miss Pavlova's explanation. To what conundrum, I'm not sure, but, uh... Miss Pavlova, allow me to pose you a riddle. Hmm? According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from the ballet. Now, that being the case, it must have been last night that you boarded this vessel. However, the SS Burya stopped by no port last night. Ah, that's it! Of course! I knew that the whole time! So, how is it, pray, that you, ca you come up to be aboard? Now that I think about it, the crewmen outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about when the occupant of this cabin came aboard. Yeah, it's not my business. Yeah. Yes, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something. Is Stroganov your friend? An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. Sorry, what was that? It is how the Russian newspapers described one of my performances. And that is how I came here too. I descended from the heavens because I am an angel. What? Uh, considering English isn't your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. Mr. Sholmes once said, I can never resist a touch of the dramatic. It seems Miss Pavlova is the same. A genius descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to detection. Words once said about myself. Shut up, Sholmes. A quote from a wonderfully extravagant advertisement for the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, in fact. No, I don't want your book series. Go away. Yes, yes, Mr. Showy. Anyway, it doesn't look like Miss Pavlova is going to tell us what really happened. Well, let's talk about a friend. So the friend you mentioned is inside your traveling case, is that right? I don't think animals are allowed on board according to the rules of passage. Oh, please, don't tell me. Oh, don't tell, don't tell any of the crew. If they found my precious... Then the burly Russians would bestir themselves in unison to throw you and your case overboard, no doubt. Ah! So reassuring, Mr. Sholmes. But what sort of pet is your friend? A little puppy? It is, isn't it? I wanna, I'm wondering what's in that other bag. I mean, I guess it has to be her clothes. Maybe an adorable little rabbit? Ha! 
You credit Russia as a land with small rabbits, do you? Oh, don't they have small rabbits there then? You may well ask. I have no idea. Ah, jeez. You two are miserable bunglers when it comes to understanding the nature of young ballerina's friends. Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken. What the fuck is wrong with you, Shelms? Really? Consider the benefits. A rousing wake-up call, daily fresh eggs. And when adversity strikes, it could satisfy the needs of sustenance. Wow, that's not a very good friend. So you'd eat your friends. I'll remember that. Wrong. Well, it would appear this friend's identity is a closely guarded secret not to be revealed. Ha 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 ha, shut up. She obviously doesn't quite trust us yet. There's something I should l like to show her, I think. Maybe she might be able to shed some light on it. Miss Pavlova, would you take a look at this? You don't know. Okay, I don't know anything. Okay. Uh, frightening the poor girl. Okay. Speckled Band. This is the diary of my friend who passed away. His diary? Yes, and he wrote in it last night before he died. Something a little unusual. It reads, 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. And then a few minutes later, 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Oh my god, it, it is a snake, and she's got like a snake whistle. Or flute. A speckled band? I don't understand. It's strange, isn't it? But the ventilator he mentions joins to this cabin, you see. It's up there on the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connected together. Oh! Oh? Miss Pavlova, has something occurred to you? Does the speckled band the victim mentioned mean something to you? Or the whistling sound, perhaps? Just tell us! No, I don't know anything. Oh. I feel like you're fucking lying. Oh, come on. We're not getting anywhere. This is annoying, actually. Oh. Hmm. Excuse me, Mr. Roylot. Uh, whoa, how did you change so fast? Yes, what? Wow, she's fast. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain's quarters at once, please. All right, I will come now. What? You must leave, now. Oh no, it's fine. Don't mind us. Yes, please don't worry yourself, Mr. Roylot. Get out! The passenger said out! Or do you want me to throw you out? Ugh, looks like we'll have to leave the investigation for later. What a pity. Jesus, this is... so long. And so we lost our chance. Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin, we were unceremoniously chased out. That is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. Oh boy. Save your girl in progress. Yeah. I guess that's the investigation phase over. Well, it says investigation part one. Oh, of course there's two parts of the investigation. Okay, well, I'm going to stop the recording for now because that's like two, it's been two and a half hours and we just finished part one of the investigation. Oh, I need to get some water.